This is a device designed to slow down the falling of an object, and it's called Parachute. Today we're going to make a parachute using very simple materials. We're going to drop it from very high with a drone, and we're also going to put some LED light to make it visible at night. So let's get started. The first thing we need is a ravage bag. Make sure it's a thin one. Please avoid using black ravage bags with very thick plastic, because that's gonna be a problem on the opening of the parachute. Make sure you are using very thin plastic. This plastic that I'm using happens to be made out of potatoes, so it's very eco-friendly and in the case I lose my parachute into the wild, it won't harm the nature because it will disintegrate naturally. So as you can see, I opened the whole bag to have just one sheet of plastic and I laid it down on the floor. So we have this rectangular shape that we're going to use to cut it in the shape of a parachute. I measured the center point and from that point I took one string and put a marker on the end and then I used it as a compass to make a circle around the whole area. I'm trying not to waste materials, so I marked a circle as big as I could from the center point. After the circle, I'm going to mark the places where I'm going to attach the main lines of the parachute, and for that, I use the same string, but just 14 centimeters or around 5.5 inches of distance between each line. The parachute should have enough lines to be stable. If your parachute only have like four lines, it will be very unstable and also the air will escape from the parachute. The strings will have to hold more weight because there are fewer of them. That's why it's better to have more lines, because that way the parachute will keep a very good aerodynamic shape so the air won't escape and the lines will hold the stress very well. Let's continue with the build. For the lines, I'm going to use high strength sewing thread and we're also going to use some tape and measuring tape. I'm going to make two set of lines. The first set is the one that will hold the parachute or will connect to the parachute and the second set will connect to the load of the parachute. So that way I'm going to connect every three lines to one line that will connect finally to the load of the parachute. That's a little bit more complex, but if you want to use just one set of lines to connect the parachute and the load, that's good as well. As you can see, I use a very simple technique to make the lines all the same length. It saves a lot of time. The second set of lines are a bit longer, but I always leave a margin of about 5 cm just in case I make a mistake. And now we're going to use the tape to attach the lines to the parachute. Each line has to go in the marks we made before. So we're going to cut the tape in little squares or triangles, it doesn't matter, and then we're going to put the end of the thread on there, and then put it in the parachute. To make sure it will stick in there, you can rub the surface of the tape with your finger or your nail. And you have to repeat this process for all the lines. We're almost there. So now because I'm using two set of lines, I'm going to link every three lines. After that, I'm going to link these lines to the main line that connects to the load. If you're using just one set of lines, it's easier, but you still have to align the parachute and I will tell you how to do that in a moment. Before I make a knot between every three lines, I make sure the parachute is aligned. That's why I'm using my feet to maintain the parachute aligned to the floor. This step is very important because if one line is pulling the parachute more than the others, it's gonna have more stress and it's more likely to break during the flight or the opening. 
Also, it will affect the shape of the parachute and the aerodynamics, but if you align everything, it should work without any problem. After you have linked all the strings and make all the nuts, we are almost ready. All you have to do is join all the strings and voila, we have a parachute. We still have some alignment to do. That's why we don't make any final knot on the strings and we let the strings run free in our hands, so when we make the alignment, they can move freely. After we have aligned all the strings in the parachute, we can make the final knot to lock everything in place. I'm gonna make a hole in the center of the parachute so the air can escape a little bit and under control. I'm gonna get rid of excess of strings and things like that to minimize the possibility of entanglement. And finally, I'm going to make a load for this parachute. In this case, it's a box containing coins and other metals with a final weight of 400 grams. And now comes the time of the truth. We're gonna use a drone to drop it from very high because this parachute is a little bit big and heavy and it's gonna be a bit of a hassle for someone to throw it in the air. And this is what happens when something goes wrong, like a line entangled in the parachute. And then with the help of some electronics I did a little system that flashes LED lights so we can see the parachute during nighttime or low visibility situations. These LED lights can be very powerful. The wind is a very important factor to determine where the parachute is going to land. When it's very windy, it's most likely that you're going to lose your parachute. Just as it happened with mine.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video very much. If you want to support the channel, consider subscribing and sharing the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.